We're back, and on the phone right now, Sammy friggin' Hagar. Hello, Sammy. Hey, that's not my middle name. No, uh, what is your middle name? Roy. <laughs> <laughs> Roy. Wait a minute, I'll take friggin'. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. We're back, and on the phone with us, Sammy Roy Hagar. <laughs> no, I think I like the first one. That's all right. So you, you can, wait a minute, you can call me Ray. No, you doesn't have to call me Jay. You can call me RJ, but you doesn't have to call me Mr. Johnson. Remember that guy who smoked cigar? Sammy, stick to uh, singing songs, okay? Nobody remembers that guy. I remember that guy. I was, he was horrible. He had one stick. That's it, you know? Yeah, that's about it. But <laughs> We don't like people with one stick, like David Lee Roth, right? Oh, uh, now here we go. Oh, uh, yeah. Go, you want to get into dirt right away. No, I don't want to get into dirt. You know what I want to do? I want to say happy belated birthday. Thank you very much. 50 years old? Wait a minute. Who told you that? My mom's lying. <laughs> yeah, right. You hit 50. <laughs> you hit 50, didn't you? The best birthday party. It was the best birthday bash. It was painless. The only pain that I uh, had was self-inflicted, and uh, I can't complain about that. You know, life is just really, really good, and if you just accept uh, each year as a... It's just a little growing period. You're just fine with age. Age is a mellow thing. It's a good thing. So so let, let's go through it. First of all, I want to know what it's like to hit 50 as just a person, just as Sammy. What went through your head before and after? Absolutely nothing. That's it, huh? That's what I'm trying to tell you. It was just like, it's like just another day, you know, and it just, and, and the day after was the only day that was a little rough, but I'm telling you, it was self-inflicted. <laughs> <laughs> and that, it was totally painless, you know? And, well, uh... I don't get it. You know, it's like, I don't think I'm that old. I look at myself. I don't think I look that old. I certainly don't think and feel that old. So I'm going, eh, I think my mom's lying. <laughs> you know, you don't look a day over 75, Sam. Maybe she's dyslexic, you know. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe you're five years old. <laughs> That's right. So don't be offended by this question, but I just want to ask it. I just want to ask it to see what your answer would be, okay? You're trying to set me up? Yeah, I'm trying to set you up. Okay, I'm set up. Okay, you hit 50. Yeah. And you got beautiful locks. Yeah. Is that your hair, Sammy? Come on. <laughs> it's my hair. Listen, uh, how you can't... Have you seen people with hair transplants? Yeah. They don't have hair like me, girl. No, they don't. No, it's like... It looks like the hair under your armpit or like between... In your crotch or something, man. Like, you know, my hair is like, you know, a foot and a half long. You can't... You can't transplant hair like that. Are you crazy? And, and, you know, I had somebody ask, somebody was looking at me and said, man, you know, like, you don't have hardly any wrinkles and you don't have, like, a double chin, all this stuff, you know. And I'm going, and they say, well, have you had any surgery? I'm going, with a nose like mine, do you think I would go in and get plastic surgery and tell them, yeah, just leave the nose? You know? <laughs> well, you gave me the answer I wanted anyway. I'll, I'll let you, like, thumb through my hair. You know how monkeys do, how they, you know, they, they, like, go through the hair and try to bite fleas out of each other? You want me to bite your fleas? No, you don't have to bite the fleas, but... As a matter of fact, I like the fleas. Just leave the fleas. But you can look through my hair like that and see if you see any weaves or hair transplants. Get out of here. <laughs> I am blessed with good genetic, uh, you know, genes or something. You know, I don't know. I'll give it to you, man. You look great. Oh, I feel great. Okay, any gray hair? Do you dye your hair? No, do not dye my hair. So I got three gray hairs, man, in one of my temples. And I think that that happened the night of my birthday as well. It's from lack of sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Now, Sammy, I'm cutting the interview off because you just made me sick. <laughs> I'm 50 years old and I'm beautiful. I'm sorry. I'm 50. Look at my chin. Not a wrinkle on it. So how long you been, how long you been on the road, Sammy? Uh, since uh, May. Yeah. So how's the tour been going? Any surprises on this? Oh, man. Well, yeah. You know, it's like I'd say the main surprise of the whole thing is the fanatic following that shows up in my shows. You know, I expected to have a, you know, the, the old Sammy Hagar fans or the new ones. I really didn't know who, who was going to actually be at the shows, whether it was going to be the Van Halen fans. The following. I didn't know who it was, but I, I, I had no, no idea that it would be such a concentrated, no-fringe-type audience. Everyone in the whole place knows every song. You know, and I go back to Montrose in this tour. I'm playing, you know, almost three hours, and I'm playing, uh, you know, a couple Montrose tunes, you know, 17 old Red Rocker tunes and six Van Halen songs and eight brand new March to Mars songs. And I mean, and, and I'm telling you, every person in every show knows every lyric to every song and every little, you know, all the little things where I throw the mic and, you know, for them to sing one quick line, you know, and, and it just, it's, it just, it's really phenomenal. I, I'm really blown away 
by every single night, every single gig, every single town, it's like the same. And I'm, I'm real, real impressed. It makes me feel really good. So, so how come, Sam, I mean, okay, maybe a stupid question, but why did you go to, to, to Sammy Hagar solo instead of going back and, and, and reforming Montrose? Oh, because I'm not a retro kind of person. Look, you know, uh, I'm, I'm a firm believer in the been there, done that theory, you know. Mm. And I don't mean because I didn't like Montrose, and I don't mean because I didn't like Van Halen. I loved both those bands. But when, when they're over, it's over for me. Okay. Once my head changes gears, I like to grow and, and progress and just, you know, just move on. Like, uh, to go back with Montrose would have been such a retro move. It was kind of like what Van Halen did when they tried to get Roth back with it, that greatest hits record, that reunion thing that kind of got aborted. Yeah, it would have been death. That was uh, a retro move to me, and I just don't see it. Like, what would I do in Montrose? Forget about the other 17 years of, uh, of music I made by myself and with Van Halen. Like, you know, that, that's what I'd have to do to go back to Montrose. And I can't forget all that music. I like moving on and taking the cream of the crop with me. You know, like the Van Halen stuff that I play in concert. I play Right Now and Dreams and Why Can't This Be Love. And, you know, some of the highlights for me while we were in that band where, where Eddie and I wrote what I think the highlights of, of, of the songs, you know, I like to take those with me and leave the rest behind and, and write new songs and play those. So that's just the kind of person I am. I can't help it. Let's take a break here and come back and, uh, and start all over again. You ready? <laughs> we'll do both sides now, and we'll come back and t- continue our conversation with Sammy Hagar in just a moment. It's both sides now from Marching to Mars on 97.7 Hits FM. We're back, 97.7 Hits FM, and Sammy Roy Hagar is on the phone with us still. Oh, you must do it to me. You <laughs> must do it. Now my middle name is, is printed. It's like it's, it's known now. It's there, dude. And if you missed the, uh, the first part of this interview, Sammy has just admitted to us that, yes, he has a hair weave. Oh, get on out of here. <laughs> hey, let me tell you, uh, you, you know what you're going to do? You're going to totally, like, blow any chance you have of your audience out there leaving you. <laughs> His name is Roy, and he's bald. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, let's get the dirt. You ready? Okay. All right. I, just want, I, I don't want to get into the, the, the mudslinging, but Sammy, if Van Halen came back to you tomorrow and they said, Sharon didn't work out, we apologize, uh, I'm kissing your feet right now, Sammy, would you come back? Would you go back? No. Okay. Yeah, I'm way too happy right now with what I'm doing, and I just wouldn't see any reason to go back. If someday, if Eddie and I could write better songs and we clicked better than we did originally, and I mean, if the band was actually better than what we originally were, which would be pretty damn tough, in my opinion, uh, I would consider doing it for the music then. But as friends, I think, you know, um, what those guys did to me is, is something that I just got to say, well, these guys aren't my friends, I don't trust them anymore, so right now it would be too hard to do that. Plus, to say Gary Sharon didn't work out, we all know Gary Sharon's not going to work out. So to say Gary Sharon didn't work out, so would you come back, that would be, like, ludicrous to me. Uh, that wouldn't be a reason for me to do it. So the uh, only reason why I would do it, like I said, is if the music and, uh, and, and Eddie and I could look each other in the eye and be closer and tighter as musicians and friends than we were, I would uh, I'd consider it for those reasons. But I don't see that ever happening. First. Okay, okay so, so let's swing this back to you. Um, Everybody, you know, compares your breakup with Van Halen, anybody's breakup with a band, to to that of a divorce. So let me ask you how life is on your own. Fantastic. Hey, man, it's like some single guy. Look, uh, I'm like a single guy now, <laughs> and uh, not just a single guy. I'm like a single guy in the coolest environment on the planet. Uh, I can do anything I want. I can play anywhere I want when I want to do it. I can write any kind of song I want. Uh, there's no restrictions, and I and I have no format. Van Halen was getting so restricted towards the end, we couldn't do anything. I used to say, hey, let's go do a free concert, but because our entourage and the whole thing was so big, it would cost us, you know, $150,000 to play one show. So we couldn't go have fun and stuff. You know, we couldn't just do things off the cuff. You know, we tried to do that thing at the, the Whiskey A Go-Go a few years ago, and, you know, it was like it became such a publicity you know, and I don't know. You know, I'm just trying to say that I am free now to do anything I want to do, and it is like being a single man in a in a, a woman's bar, man. <laughs> <laughs> like the only guy in town or something. It's really, really cool. 
So let me ask you an, another question. Again, not bringing up dirt, but I'm, I'm kind of interested in, in, in what you would have to say if I said... You and Roth have always had this ongoing little battle going on, this 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 tangle of the tongues, so to speak. Yeah. But but now that you've seen the other side of of the Van Halen morals and the politics, do you tend to side with Dave a little bit more? Uh, no, I don't tend to side with Dave. I understand a little bit more now, maybe why Dave quit. But see, I didn't quit Van Halen, right? Right. Placed me with David Lee Roth again for a great assist record for it's a big for a big money scheme and a big uh, publicity scam and a big uh, maybe scam the old fans back you know fish them in and get them on to put a little bait out there for them and you know that's what that whole thing was and that sickened me and it Dave but Dave I just read his book and he even says it in the book that you know I did not quit the band I would they made it impossible for me to stay and that's exactly what happened <coughs> but uh, for me to side with David Lee Roth, hmm. it would be like, uh, you know, uh, see, what, who, uh, maybe uh, somebody siding with Hitler, you know, <laughs> or their country, you know. Oh, Jesus. The enemy, and he'll kind of like always be the enemy, but I don't really take him seriously, you know. Dave, he's kind of living in that little dream world he's in, and I, I, I'm not sure we can take Dave too seriously now, because he, he's kind of went beyond the singer-artist routine and it become more of like a character and more like a celebrity you know yeah yeah exactly anyway mr hagar happy belated birthday to you not my style that's all i'm saying i want to be an artist not a celebrity okay all right and you are one until you know that one day when we pull off your hair weave and we make you sing just a gigolo i'm gonna make you go through my hair with a magnifying glass you find one weave or one uh transplant in there and i will do anything to you in front of anyone in any place on this planet that you choose. I will come and see you tonight, and I will do that, because you know why? I'm going to bring scissors, and I'm going to get a lock of your hair, and I'm going to sell it. <laughs> and I'm going to make cash <laughs> out of this little venture we've got going. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. Okay. The next rock auction, there will be a lock of Sammy's hair on a nice gold chain for somebody. I'll, I'll donate it. You won't have to go through all this. <laughs> uh, continued good luck with, with your album, sir, and I'm, I'm glad to hear you're having a good time. Thank you very much. All right, Marching to Mars, this is Sammy Hagar on 97.7 Hits FM.